Initial treatment of uh, mantle cell is complex and it's often very confusing for patients. Uh, they read often before they, they see uh, an expert in the disease and so they find a lot of fearful information about mantle cell being a very aggressive disease. But in fact, about 20% of newly diagnosed mantle cell patients have an indolent, very slow growing form of the disease and may not require initial treatment at all. They can just be observed and have an assessment of what the pace of disease is and treat them when they're clearly progressing or becoming symptomatic. And some patients can be followed for months and even years uh, without treatment. For those who require treatment, then it's, it's an equally complex discussion about uh, are they patients who should consider more intensive induction and a stem cell transplant, uh, an autologous transplant consolidation uh, in the front line with the aim of getting a very deep and durable remission and control of the disease, although it's not a curative treatment, versus a non-transplant approach where you might use a chemoimmunotherapy backbone such as bendamustine rituximab, uh, potentially followed by maintenance uh, rituximab therapy. And there's a lot of interest right now in uh, and a number of studies that are underway or planned that are using, say, that bendamustine rituximab backbone and adding in a BTK inhibitor or venetoclax or bortezomib, the proteasome inhibitor, et cetera. Uh, so there's, so it's a, it's a, a complex discussion.